good morning shooting people. I'm going to give you a quick video this morning to talk about the, the ballistic arc of a bullet. Why the uh, scope is zeroed the way it is, even iron sights. You're, you're taking into account the fact that that bullet uh, needs to rise up and then fall back down as it reaches out to the range. So I'm going to use my squirrel gun this morning. This is my customized Ruger 1022. It's got a Liberty uh, suppressor on it, a Tactical Solutions barrel and the scope is from Cabela's. So what we're gonna do, I've got targets set up uh, against sandbags, and I'm gonna move my shooting positions back. We're starting at 10 yards, then we're gonna go to 10, uh, 20, and then 30. And you're gonna see on the other camera why the bullet strike is going to shift as we change our position, maintaining that same point of aim. All right, so we're gonna load our first three shots of Remington subsonic, subsonic ammo. using a nice solid rest that we would take any influence of the body and my breathing out of the factor we're going to get as steady as possible so we have a very nice consistent shot group All right, that'll be the 10 yard group. We're gonna move back now. All right, next we're gonna shoot three rounds from 20 yards. yards. This is the, the view through the scope. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll see I've got the crosshairs, but then there's some other smaller crosshairs below that I use for ranging marks. So I'm at 10 yards right now, and I'm going to use that lower crosshatch mark to aim at center target. I'm going to fire three shots, and because of the zeroing, you'll see that these are going to hit pretty close. to that dot. Now, bear with me while I aim through my camera viewfinder here. There we go. Let's go with that. There's one. A little high. Two. Three. There it is. Pretty tight group. Not too shabby. Of course, it's 10 yards away, so the bullet hasn't had much time to, you know, bury its flight, get thrown around by my poor trigger squeeze or the wind or whatever but that gives you an idea of how I'm using that those different marks and if I peel over here to the white you can see that more clearly that I've used that lower uh, tiny crosshatch right below the, the primary crosshairs and again that's because I've zeroed it for range kind of know where I'm shooting at and you can use those in your own marksmanship So what do we mean when we talk about the, the scope and the, and the bore and your line of sight versus your, your line of flight? There's my handy dandy little sunshade, the Cabela's scope. A little bit close to the end, you get some, some sun glare in certain instances. Nice little cheap, easy fix. So your line of sight is what you see through the scope. Your line of flight is how the bullet leaves that barrel and you notice that they're a significant distance apart, but that's why my bullet strike 
changes. At 10 yards, that bullet is still coming up from the barrel. So my line of sight here, but my bullet path is still down here. So this and this corresponds to this distance here. Does that make sense? Because of the way the scope is adjusted, as that bullet rises up, it's going to rise and then fall as it gets out further and further. As I move back at 20 yards, I'm here, and 30 yards, I'm here, because I've zeroed the scope to be on target and maybe a little bit high at around 30 yards. There's a, a mark on the scope where I'll aim at, if I'm at 25 or 30 yards, there's a lower mark that I can use if I'm below 20 yards and I know that I'm going to be pretty close to where I'm aiming. Why do I pick 20, 30 yards? Because this is the gun I use to hunt squirrels with, and that's the range that I shoot most of my squirrels is about 20 yards or less. And by doing this test, figuring this out for this particular make of ammunition, I can be very confident, very consistent, and, and be able to predict with a high degree of accuracy exactly where that bullet is rising and falling and make very precise hits. It takes practice, it takes time, but the more you understand about some of the physics behind your bullet, the more accurate, the better of a hunter, the better of a marksman, uh, the better of a target shooter you're going to be. So I hope you learned something from this little video. Uh, anything I've done wrong, I'm sure the, the YouTube community will, will nitpick me to death. But the, the nice thing about the shooting community is that we love to teach each other. And every time I teach something, I learn something. I found that out through my life. So hopefully by teaching you this, you learn something. And if I've done something wrong or explained it poorly, somebody else in the community can come back and make us all smarter. So thanks for watching and have a great day.